very much, Ikem. Um, I mean, it's good that we are, I mean, you've touched on issues around the DPCO, and uh, a DPCO is uh, in our midst, and I'm sure you'll be able to also address some of the concerns you have. Uh, Bidemi, uh, going by your experience uh, in the market, uh, I think uh, Ikem has said some of the things which uh, some of the questions I, I believe you may have been faced with uh, when interacting with clients. Uh, but um, I think what uh, I wa I mean, what I've gotten from her is that uh, there's a lot that the DPCO needs to do, both interacting with the data controllers and also with NITDA. So uh, the question for you is that uh, what are the service offerings uh, the DPCO can provide, and uh, I think uh, it, it seems that the DPCO has a lot of role which uh, has been uh, emphasized in the regulation, and it would be good to hear your perspective. And um, in addition to that, uh, can you also speak to the issue of making compliance easier, uh, since uh, you are a compliance or organization, and uh, how you think uh, the market would react to issues of compliance in the near future. All right, thanks. Uh, maybe we'll start on a lighter mode uh, by saying that the uh, personal informations that were volunteered at the process of registering for this event are adequately protected, and they will not be, <laughs> they will not be abused. So you should not be expecting unsolicited emails. Uh, I see that has been the major a breach you really have around here where you provide your information for a particular purpose and you're being harassed uh, uh, daily by information or that you do not uh, uh, require. Uh, uh, to answer uh, 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 the uh, questions, the two major questions you've asked, uh, so I see a lot of creativity among DPCOs uh, currently. Uh, we just have about 11 of them licensed and um, from what we see in the market uh, in terms of active work in the space, uh, we see that uh, just a number uh, have uh, uh, what we call a collage of the experience that is needed for a function like this. Uh, uh, permit me to say without necessarily demarketing anyone that it's not uh, just uh, uh, being a law firm. It's not just being a tech firm. Uh, it's not just being a data administrator. Uh, from what we think, uh, we, actually, uh, uh, we actually think that you need a confluence of all these capacities in uh, the deployment of the service. And that's why, I mean, in terms of our intervention today, we had to bring the law firm and the tech firm, I mean, uh, and, and administrators, I mean, uh, to to uh, to deliver uh, this particular session. Uh, so when in, in choosing your DPCO, some of the things you're looking for is that you have all this capacity sitting in one, and sometimes uh, if you do not have them, uh, if you do not have them isolated, uh, it might just be smart for you to ask uh, uh, who do we really have on your team? Uh, to be sure that you are not blindsided, you do not have a DPCO who is only strong on the IT uh, part, but uh, are very weak on the, on, on the legal uh, framework. Uh, Femi spoke so extensively on documentation, uh, which uh, uh, largely you will be needing a lot of uh, uh, privacy lawyers uh, to look uh, into uh, extensively. Uh, and, and maybe to make you smile, it came, uh, uh, I mean, our service offering, typically, uh, uh, typical annual retainer service offering uh, comes with uh, the training of uh, DPOs. Uh, and then as a different service in itself, uh, we also provide uh, uh, that same training. So in other words, you might have, I want to go with a ballpark uh, uh, annual retainer uh, sort of uh, uh, service which uh, 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 contains uh, an advisory service all through the year. It involves also the filing of your 
uh, data audits. Uh, currently, now you know you have to file two. You have to file. There's one that has to be filed by October 25th, and there is one also that has to be filed by March uh, uh, 15th. Uh, so, uh, uh, I mean, someone whispered to me, I will not mention his name, just before we came on the panel. He said, you know, I've been reviewing a lot of DPCUs in terms of their pricing. And I'm just wondering that you guys are pricing so cheaply. I mean, how are you guys going to be able to break even eventually? And I, I think that ties into the second question Yemi asked. I think for us, when we saw this, uh, apart from being lawyers and, uh, and, uh, and techies as well, uh, we, we quickly jumped on it because we knew where uh, the world is at. And the first question we were asking ourselves is, it's not how to make money from this, but how to make this as easy as possible. And almost immediately, we've started conversations around need that country just automate these functions, particularly when it comes to, for example, data audits. And so I, I'm very sure conversation is going on around there because, I mean, similar to what, dri what drove us into the establishment of tax tech in 2015, uh, coming from tax in 2014, was to see how we can make things more cost and time efficient and uh, effective. And so, uh, I, I mean, uh, at the risk of sounding very religious, I would say that uh, by the grace of God, uh, hopefully before the October 25th deadline, uh, possibly there should be a product in the market that can see to some form of data compliance, data audit compliance on an automated basis and where a large number of people uh, can comply uh, on the most cost and time uh, effective basis. I mean, just to mention, because if you look at the NDPR implementation framework, I mean, typically you have about over 65 questions over there that you have to not only answer, but your auditor has to verify. By the time we costed that in terms of the amount of time it would take, particularly if you have to do, undertake a field audit uh, with the relevant professionals, some of us here yeah, are lawyers, but we charge by the hour, and we charge in hundreds of dollars. Uh, so by the time you have all of those people in the same room, that comes at a very prohibitive cost. But we think that there should be smarter ways without compromising quality, without compromising uh, uh, the sort of uh, uh, response need that wants, uh, where everyone, uh, I think at the last time we're looking at about 1.5 million uh, uh, data controllers in the market that might need to comply. So we should find a way, and we are at tax tech uh, finding a fantastic way around this. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Bidemi. Edward. <laughs> 